going away from the trains now, but keeping in London, you've been in the 50s, we've got this young girl here, the headscarf on and the, and the dress uh, and the coat, and uh, these young lads with boards in their hands. Not quite sure what they're going to do with them, they're almost big enough to be huge cricket bats, but that's not what they are. So we've got the young boys here playing in the street, washing out in the old days there on the washing lines, and lovely paving stones to try and get the feeling of as well. So I'm going to have to play around with both brushes and sponges here to get the effects I want. Um, well, I'm going to use a sponge roller on this one again. Um, and uh, although I'm playing with a very tonal work, slightly sepia, I want to make it a little richer this time. Play slightly more with the uh, warms and cools of the delicate yellows and golds in this painting. So I'll be using black, yellow ochre, white and burnt sienna. I'm also going to use some of the chrome yellows and lemon yellows as well to work into this. So let's make a start. And I think uh, one of the first things we're going to do is uh, build up these midterms. So there isn't much point in putting too much drawing in at this stage. We we'll want to know where the basics are. Working through our warm and cool greys as a background. Now it's gone really quite purple with it. And when I say purple, I mean black and white, which gives us the blue and the bad sienna. We'll really start to plough in some warmer grey into here, which will make the other seem cooler because it's one against the other. That's most of our warm greys in. So I'm going to put in later with the highlights as we do with the sponge afterwards. I've got to do it yet. If I look great, now it's time to continue. I want to start on the sky. At the moment I'm just mixing lots of white and deep. Okay, well let's carry on with this and we're going to use a lighter yellow now. I'm going to actually use some, try a little bit of lemon yellow and just see how it goes. It may be too bright, I think, so I'll take it down a fraction, a bit of ordinary yellow, the chrome yellow, and just see what happens. I'm just going to take that over the surface a bit. It's interesting. Um, we use this lighter yellow, and it certainly changes the whole picture. Okay, so I'm going to start using this light grey now which will give me a cool so I've got a just a black and white so I'll like a little tint of, of uh, black just to bring it down a bit don't want it too stark A fraction. I don't lose too much by going over it too much. 
I think I'm almost at the stage where I'm going to have to come in with a brush to start picking things out because I'm losing it a bit and I can't get the delicacy that I actually need with a brush. So just for the moment I'm going to stop with that and uh, come back to a brush. I'm going to continue with the roller just a little while longer and a few more um, tints on here and one of the things I want to do is put a little bit more of the burnt sienna on um, but this time almost neat just, just very thinly, let's see if we can do that I want it to play against the the cools a bit more so that the cool looks blue rather than grey I can do that by making warms against the blue to make them look even warmer. Right, I think it's possibly about time I uh, started on some whites with a paintbrush. I'm going to take a little filbert brush now because I can use that both ways around and pick up some pure white and just start on some of these highlights, drawing a bit more carefully now. It's an interesting way to work this. And, uh, I don't want to become too twee with it, but I'll do doing some more colour work with my paintings later. Just for a moment. Brush strokes you should be able to capture very basics of what we're after here. I have to hope that the white is going to work and it's not going to kill it. It's been quite alive with the. So I'm just literally using the work I did with the roller as a background, that's all. As an underpainting. Just feel I'm killing it a bit with this white, but we'll see. Because we didn't go black, we went warm, so if I use black now, I'll be able to pick some of these shadows out and give it a lot more feeling of three dimension, I hope. And black isn't a colour that I normally use in my palette. I guess I'll be using dark colours to mix rather than black, to a bit inert. But if you use it like this as a warm or a cool, it'll be very effective. The same with these guys and the details on here. We can just start to pick out now. I'm talking about blackbirds, I don't know whether you can hear it, but in the background it's the most beautiful song of a blackbird going on there. Of course it isn't just there that the black's going to be, we're going to be picking out some of these lovely stones in between with the, with the black, just going around them and these lovely shapes and I'm, I'm making them up as I go along. I'm, I've painted shapes that are about the ones that are there but I'm not copying them exactly. That's not again what this is about, we're not copying a photograph exactly, we're making an impression, an illusion of something give the feeling of this wonderful period in time how these children were enjoying themselves then innocently and without all this prejudice we get these days of letting the kids out on the street to play just a couple of little marks can make a painting or break it this is happening just at the moment with this here where I've got the nose and the I've got to get this just right if I want it to work. Don't overdo it, just, just simplify that face and shape. I haven't quite got that head. This head's so important and I've got to get it done on right. A fraction out either way. This isn't going to work, so I get it dead on. To redraw some of this. What I was doing earlier because I wasn't drawing properly. I 
But even though we're only using a few colours, we can use them with great effect, I think you'll find, if we're subtle with them. It takes a bit of subtlety, and if we can handle a few colours, it makes it easier to handle more, doesn't it, later? I think we might need to bring that sky into some of those a bit more. But I think that's enough for tonight. Well, another nice morning out there, and we're back on this painting. Build up some details on here. Um, the first things I want to do is look at the colours on the linen up here, and just go back to uh, some grey on that, just black and white, to give a cool. Just, uh, And we can see the difference that makes almost immediately. It's a... I'm going to, to get some of these washing lines in, and I think anybody would be a little bit fearful of that because um, very fine lines, and if we make a mistake, it's going to be difficult to get them off again. So I need to find a rigger brush for that. I've got one here. Nice long rigger. And we'll make up some dark with that, some grey with a little touch of warmth into it, a little touch of the burnt sienna. Just see if that's going to work. So I'm going to rest my hand, let's try it that way. I've got to finish up here. A nice even arc. At least the paint is dry, that's better. Although now the paint's kind of a bit thin because of the pores damp. But we're getting in some. I want to go over that a bit later as well again. Uh, I'm going to get the sponge roller and just go across this area here with a little bit of texture to get the feeling of light coming through it. It's a little bit too stark at the moment. There's different ways of working. I was looking at another artist's work this morning who just been on touch on Facebook. Wonderful, loose, vibrant um, landscapes that are in between the contemporary and the more traditional. and. Uh, Sort of play between the abstract and figurative. Very, very impressive and very inspiring. It's nice for me. I do enjoy seeing other people's work and I like to work in so many different ways. As you know, I don't just like to stick with one way of working because each way is to explain different feelings or emotions or talk about the different materials or light or... In other words, we use the medium and the method and the best way to explain the subject and our feelings. Um, we not, shouldn't just be stuck with one way of working, I don't think. There's this concept that some galleries have that you know, they get, prefer an artist just to work in one way, where they stand, but as we evolve, we need to evolve our work as well. Just to bring the eye out there, you see those few small marks that make such a difference. A different direction, they're coming with the, the flow of the um, stones here. I'm just working between my round and filbert brush. I have to explore a bit more as well. I think. Turn some pure yellow ochre down here just to see about the warmth in the foreground. I've got enough gold in here or not. Well, that's where to go from here, because I think we're almost done in some ways. Um, just want to get the roller and just bring that light across a bit more in places. Right, now, very carefully, and the trepidation will make a bit more paint for the roller. Before finished and uh, just see if we can come over here a fraction to bring this 
this over here just slightly so the light's just shining through here take it back that little bit push this back a fraction it's just too sharp edged now oh, just trying to find the last final marks and colours that are required isn't that And it brings, try and bring some of that cream just across into the figures a bit. So let's just try a little white and lemon yellow. Just over the, uh, the figures just to see if that reflects the sky. Just little points like this that one misses that can make such a difference. So let's see if it's not the thing that you think is wrong, but the thing next to it. I think if we put a little bit more black down here, let's see what happens then. It comes round there and out here to his trousers. Just bring it forward a bit there, eh? That's better. I'm saying it's not always the thing that you think is wrong that is. It can be something next to it. Right, well that's another one I think is finished. So we'll work from the bottom of that to the top. Give you an idea again. So it's not a photograph, it's based on a photograph. It's fairly representational and photographic, yes, but it's very loose in style. Just playing a few simple colours. Black, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white. A little bit of lemon and cadmium yellow here and there. 